hi guys hope you're all doing well welcome back to our channel and in this video i'm going to talk about microsoft defender for endpoint api and how you can use powershell or postman to query the data which is generated by mde or microsoft defender for endpoint now if you're watching this series from the beginning in the last video we have discussed about event timeline Whereas the core agenda of this video will be understanding how to use MDE APIs to query a specific set of data, how it can be queried with the help of an application that is registered in Azure AD. So we'll also talk about registration process of an application. And then we'll talk about granting permissions. I mean, what permissions are required so that you can query the data. Now, first things first. Likewise, we have a Graph Explorer for querying the data, which is available through Microsoft Graph. Similarly, we also have API Explorer available on security.microsoft.com. Okay. And in order to access it, you have to go to the section of Partners and API and then click on API Explorer. Now, this console will show you the list of default queries which are available. The moment you'll click on any of these, this link over here will get customized and you will start getting results over here. Now, before I go there, there are a couple of other things as well, which I wanted to cover. And the first one is related to the endpoint URI itself. Okay. Now there can be multiple methods which can be used depending upon the entity type. Likewise, you can either use get post put patch delete or options. Okay. But, there is one more very important aspect and that is related to the geolocation of the tenant. Now, if you take a close look at the endpoint URI itself, it says API hyphen US. Now, this is because the tenant location or this is because the data center location for my tenant is US. So practically, there are only three possibilities. So it can be either API hyphen EU or API hyphen UK. These three links can be used to query MDE data. Now, the reason why I am covering this information, because when you'll read the official documentation of get access with application context, this is what has been mentioned in the default script, which is available in the official documentation. But when you will read some more details, you'll come to know that for better performance, these are the endpoint URIs which are closer to your geolocation or your data center geolocation is something that you have to use. Okay. Now, before I go ahead and talk about everything, how exactly it is working, there is a certain amount of understanding that should exist. And that is, you should know how Azure AD application works, how the permission part works and what exactly this OAuth client credential flow. Okay. Now, again, I have already covered this in a lot more detail in this particular video, and I will be sharing this link in the description section. If your time permits, please go ahead and watch it. Okay. Now let's proceed with the first step of registering Azure AD application in the app registration section. So I'll come back to my browser. I'll go to portal.azure.com. Now I'll go to Azure AD and then I'll go to app registration. So as of now, I'm just creating an app that I will be using to query the data. So here I'm just going to name it as Windows Defender. I'm not going to make any change over here, but here I'll select web and I will type HTTPS localhost. That's it. And then I'll click on register. So as of now, an application is created and we can use the client ID and the secret for this particular application to access MDE data. Okay. So what I'll do now is I'll copy this value and then I'll go to certificates and secrets. And here I'm going to create a new client secret and let's give it a timeline of three months. That's it. I'm going to copy this particular value and I'll save it so that we can use it in future. Okay. Now I'll close this. Now the next section is granting the permissions which are required for MDE and MD ATP APIs. Okay. So I'll come back to this particular console. I'll refresh this and my 
application is getting listed now so i'll click on this and then i'll go to api permissions and then here i have to select this option of add a permission okay now since we are talking about client credential flow there is no user interaction which exists so we have to grant application permissions not the delegated permissions okay so now i'm going to click on this option which is apis my organization uses and here i'm going to type windows and i'm getting this option of windows defender atp okay now the moment i'll click on this i have to click here which is application permissions and here i'm getting the list of all the different entity sets which can be queried now why am i saying entity sets because if you'll come back to api explorer and just go to this default url which is securitycenter.windows.com forward slash api just match this list with the set of permissions that you are getting that you are defining to be very precise okay so here i'm getting indicators users configuration score software vulnerabilities advanced queries okay alerts files ips machine actions and whatnot okay so if i'll come back here you'll see you're getting the same set of information so let's say with this application i will be viewing alerts okay and let's say with this application i will be viewing all the data of machines okay so i'll click on these and then i'll click on add permissions now as of now the permission has only been added but it still requires admin consent because as i've said before that since there is no user interaction which is happening there is no possibility of consent framework to work or there should be any prompt that is coming to any entity or then a service principle or a user principle can approve that okay that's the reason why you have to approve all these permissions that you have granted okay now if i talk about a typical workflow what exactly will happen what we are accessing mde data which can be machines alerts or incidents it has been protected by azure ad so that's the reason why we created azure ad application we will be using this application to access this data because we have granted the required permission and then at the end we can use either powershell or postman okay now step number one will always be querying the token that means we'll send an authentication request to the token endpoint itself okay now for that i'll come back to postman and i'll click on new and then i'll click on this option and then i'll click on authorization and here i'm going to select this option now for me some of the details are already populated if possible please watch the next video as well because over there i'm covering this in a lot more detail okay so now what i will be doing is i will be updating these details with the new client id and client secret that we have just created okay so i'll just paste it over here and yes this is where we are going perfect so now i'm going to click on get new access token as you can see the authentication is completed and now if i copy this okay and let's say if i come back to my browser and this time i go to jwt.io i can decrypt this token from here I'll just go here and paste this here and as you can see the permissions that I have granted they are getting listed over here okay so I'll come back to my postman console I'll click on use token and then here I'm going to type the link to access alerts since alerts permission exist I will get this data as you can see but what I would like to show that if here I go and type indicators then it will not show us the required set of information you can see the application permission are missing which is ti read write or read write all okay so step number one was to request a token and then step number two was to use that token to reach the endpoint uri okay now one very important note here and that is it doesn't matter whether you use postman or powershell make sure the permissions that you have granted are getting listed in the token otherwise your queries will fail you will get an error which is unauthorized 401 something like that okay so my actual agenda is to make sure that we reach to this particular stage but then i'll explain you how i have created this particular script which helps you query any set of data 
Now, this is something which I will be covering in the third or fourth video of this series, but just a quick glimpse in terms of where exactly we are heading. So this is a script wherein if I provide a correct client ID and client secret, it can help you choose which entity set you want to query. And then if you think you are getting the right set of data, you can actually go ahead and save that data that you have queried. Okay. Let me show you this and then it will make more sense. So as of now, I have just updated my new client ID and client secret and I'm going to initiate this script. As you can see, it is a requesting token and it is also showing me all the permissions that exist. Okay. So from here, I can go ahead and select machines, for example, and then I'll click on OK. Now it will again go back, query and give me the list of all the machines. As you can see, it is getting listed over here as well as it will also let you know what was the URI this script was trying to reach. Okay. Now, if I will close this, it will ask me that whether you want to save this detail or not. Let's say I say no. It will again come back and show me the same console. This time I can go and click on alerts and I'll get the list of all the alerts which are coming over here. Now, let's say if I close this, it will ask me again. And let's say if I say why it will create a file in the form of log. And then I can just go ahead and use Excel to view that report. Okay. So this was all about knowing the basics which are related to MDE API, how you should create application. The reason why I'm breaking down this into three different videos, because if I'll try to include everything in one video, it will be a super long video and it will not be possible for me even to, you know, narrate the entire story. So with this app, video itself, I have created the application that I'm going to use for the remaining series. Okay. In the next video, we are going to talk about how to query MDE data with Postman. If you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new, please feel free to subscribe as well as join our support membership to support the channel. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.